Hello everybody, welcome back, back for some ANZ PL actions and we're joined today with PP Power from the Cairns Comets, back up in the ANZ Premier League again, not since season one have they have they been up here and it, tell you what, it was so great to see you guys back up there and thanks for joining us today. Oh no worries, thanks for having me. No, anytime. Like, I really enjoyed talking with you at the end of the uh, ANZ B League season and um, so glad we could get you back in and especially in, in this, this manner as well because like it was, I feel like it was going to be hard with, with you breaking into the Premier League and starting off with the tiebreaker win. It must be filling you with a lot of confidence. Um, yeah, it's obviously it was uh, good to at least make sure we scored some points during the season and didn't just get a donut after 10 rounds, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's. I think everyone's a, uh, a bit, almost surprised that we're performing at the level we are so quickly. I tell you, it makes for entertaining games. Like the um, we're going to talk a bit in depth about the the attacking round that you guys had on um, on Muravanka a bit bit later more in depth. But I feel like even the casters at the end they didn't even realize that the cap time had expired. They were still commentating the game. Yeah, I, I think um, it was uh, definitely interesting. I think it ticked down to about uh, fifteen seconds, and we're like, "Oh, hold on, this is um, yeah. this is possible here." They're yeah, actually, um, they're actually throwing harder than we are. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's before we start talking about the game, we'll take it back a step first. And uh, heading into into this season, there was obviously the draft at the beginning. Um, how how is felt picking up players like Safi and uh, AVP Marine and Mendicant Bias, who all three of those players have ANZPL experience. Mendicant Bias in particular, um, with being Rikachi, I, I think that's how you say it, from the OG Comets in Season 1, um, and and as well picking up Stife as well. That, that's that got to feel, feel pretty good because all those players uh, bring, bring their own little bits and pieces to your team. Yeah, well, um, Akachi's been, oh, he's been one of my best mates uh, since, oh, for two years now. He, um, we actually go to the pub together. We live like a couple of kilometers away from each other, but um, he he meshes really well with Dark Knight and Zula. Um, we're pretty well in the same Discord channel every night talking, so it was good to get him back into the um into the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't have to build too much chemistry from from him. Uh, Safi's well, Safi. He was going to be a a round one pick by whoever could get their hands on him. Um, he's got endless experience of competitive play and knows knows the game mode well enough. And yeah, it's going to be really good to to draw what knowledge we can out of him. Um, and then Stife and AVP are just good quality players that I know use a microphone and a good atmosphere to be around. So. Yeah, I think I think we've uh, fit fit in quite well together as a team, and that's that's always half the battle. I think if you can have that that team chemistry and you're having fun while you're playing with each other as well, that that means so much when when you're playing an actual game. It means that if you're if you're having fun, then you don't get rattled as much, um, which I feel happened a, a little bit to the Matildas because uh, going forward, like you. You did keep your map picks, so you won. Um, you won both on actually, Muravanka. Yeah, Muravanka, yeah. and um, which you know Muravanka is generally a defensive sided map anyway. So when you picked up the defensive win there, uh, it was going okay, cool. It's defensive on Muravanka, but then picking up the attacking win there as well that uh, th that I think raised a few eyebrows and went okay, cool, cool. This this could be interesting, and then obviously Matilda's bringing it back with. Um, both wins on their map pick of Tundra. But um, Himmelsdorf sort of seemed a little bit like a slugfest. Like, I know you personally brought out the mouse with its huge HP pool there, and there were a few other other tanks there. And um, how important was it that you got to pick it? Because I think your, your cap win um, was the fastest win of the game. I think that was only like two and a half minutes or something. Um, so that gave you the choice of picking a side on Himmelsdorf. And how important was that to you guys in securing that eventual tiebreaker win? Um, I, I think it was probably the deciding factor. Um, I think uh, I, I had a lot more knowledge on 
how I could manipulate the game for um, the tiebreaker. If on defense, then attack. I knew that I could um, force them to to make a play onto the side of the map that I wanted. Um, mm -hmm. And I had enough information based on their play styles from the previous four games and watching them play the whole previous season that I could roughly predict what type of lineup they were going to bring and I could just double counter. Mm -hmm. And it worked well. You could see on the uh, the broadcast that they were doing on Friday night that there was a particular angle where you were hold down in that spot looking looking over one of the capture points there and you could see the side of the mouse but because of the angle they couldn't get get penetrating shots and so they could see you. They knew you were there but yeah, just couldn't do any damage. Yeah, it's just they didn't have any any solid long range um, mm -hmm. penetration power that I could just pen the mouse so I could just sit there and spot mm -hmm. and just trade information and on defense if I know where your tanks are I'd, that's a bigger advantage for me than it is for you that's it and especially when it came down to I think it, it was kind of a 2v1 at the end with Whippet sort of off on the side because he was on, on reload um, so that 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 was quite significant, I think, in getting you the win. And even when it came down to the 1v1, it felt like like you guys were in the driver's seat there. Yeah, I think uh, we have went back and had a look at that, um, had a look at the whole series and had a look at the brawls, and it was just pretty well hen rates. We, we had a lot more hit points, but if we didn't have those hit points, we would have lost. We just didn't mm. pen our shots, and it just came down to... to just a couple of pens when we needed to, um, yeah, just to to get it that close to a to a one v one that we ended up winning. But yeah, if we if we picked up our pen rates a bit better, it would have been a, a bit higher of a steamroll. But that's that's just how it goes. It. You can't you can't uh, you know come in and just thrash everybody. You know you got to give got to have some room for improvement. <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's not B League anymore. You're Let's, actually playing with the playing with the big boys. Mm -hmm. So I think our our most calm sentence during the B League was just oh pens win game. Yeah. Like if you if you if we pen hundred percent we're gonna win. It doesn't matter if we're caught out of position, like half the players bounce every shot, so we as long as you pen and they bounce, you're up on the HP anyway. So That's that's exactly right. So um we're gonna flip over now and, and have a look at uh, Strat Sketch and have a bit of a chat about um, the the cap game that you won. Like it was a bit of a toss up whether I wanted to talk about this one or the uh, the Himmels Himmelsberg um, tiebreaker game there because I and I came to this one because it was just there were a couple of things that you did differently to sort of a standard Muravanka attack. So um, you coming in for for setting up for the one flag here. It was kind of a little bit standard but you you drove further down um the the i'm not even sure what you'd call that the, the, one, the line, one line i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> like but, like but right on the edge of that one line there um and and positioned yourselves a fair bit more forward of of where you where traditionally strats have seen people stop um so what what was the thought process there what what was the initial play that you were going for um, well, we saw we saw their lineup, and we knew that they were going to play a standard defense, very very basic, very reliable. Um, we want to three v five playing the exact same thing on our defense. Um, so we knew that their their play was going to be very standard, and our their whole strat was, hey, it's Muro defense. Let's just throw throw shit at something and see what sticks, mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, let's do a one-line shove. We've never done a one-line shove. We know Whippet likes to counter strat. He actually lined his three heavy tanks up to look down the four line for mm -hmm. the for the usual push that we did all last season in B-League. Um, and that let us get to down to G1 with only with an acceptable amount of bleed. It was going to be a question on whether we committed the batch out of Dark Knight down with them. But we saw Mary leave, so we're like, we don't need to. We can just start capping. We were actually we were we were curious um, to see where their batch out would show up. We knew he would come for the resets um, through the through the E line F line, 
from the town. Um, yeah, it's straight. Because, it's yeah, because then we can play safe if we have G1 control. Uh, we can play safe from uh, through the town. So we were actually surprised he didn't show up a lot earlier. Uh, yeah, and then they obviously tried, they obviously successfully re-pushed out the one line, but by then the cap had gone off. That's it. We'd, we'd played safe enough that their bat chat wasn't able to get a reset in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that's exactly what you did. You you brought Dark Knight down onto the the cap with with yourself there, uh, and I I was actually fairly impressed because Stife had bled pretty much half his health just on that cross mm. getting down there, and he survived quite a long time. Um, and a, a misplay by the Matildas as well because this as this is happening, you've got your cap happening out there, but Dark I felt waited a long time to move he across he waited too long i don't mm. think they actually realized that because dark knight was screwing around a bit just trying mm. to work out where we could actually put him and he's like oh, i'll just jump on cap at least i can build some pressure and i don't think they realized we put two on cap because they would only have to drive 100 meters to get a free reset on us from the three heavy tanks and our yeah. one line was dead anyway that, um, that's it. Like, and that's how it ended up as well on the last game. Like, um, Stife and AVP went down, but there was like five seconds left on the cap when that happened. So the, the all the tanks down the south never had a chance to get up and Dark just left his run too late and didn't get an angle. Yeah, I, I think he was... I think they were looking at, um, oh, yeah, we'll win the one line, then I'll come in for a reset, rather mm. than that. their focus was on the one line rather than moving the bat chat in for a reset mm. um but yeah I, w- I will say it was uh we were as surprised as everyone else that we won it but we'll take it we'll take a win any day that's that's it yeah take them uh, wherever you can get them yeah especially on your vanker attack it's um <laughs> yeah, yeah it was quite a quite a amusing seeing that we had three tanks alive three of us did zero damage but we won the round so yeah really we three were... did zero damage that's oh that's yeah. a stat yeah dark knight didn't fire a shot. Oh. Uh, and I think Stife and myself didn't actually do any damage when the, sh- uh, when the, uh, when the cap went off. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, th- I think we'll take, uh, yeah, we'll that, that's, two. that's an interesting stat, isn't it? Winning in three of your tanks don't actually do any damage. That's, that's crazy. But then- yeah. Uh, the, yeah. I think the, uh, the surprise cap definitely, definitely mm. won that. So. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it has has given you that tiebreaker win, puts you uh, in third after the the first round because the other two games, um, North Sydney Sentinels beat Perth Panthers and the Scorpions beat the Action X. Um, but next week's uh, a bit harder match for match up for you there because you're coming up against the Scorpions, last year's runner up in the grand final. Uh, no changes between seasons, so they've got that team consistency still going for them. Um, have have you started sort of think of obviously you've started thinking about that's a silly question i don't know why i started to ask that have you if you started thinking about how you're going to take them on you probably were thinking about that just as soon as the uh, uh, uh as soon as the game finished last week but um have, have you got got any sort of like maybe surprise strats to try out against them cuz you know jt with his calling is uh, he he can quite quite readily pull something out of nothing sometimes yeah um well, you actually were on the on the right question there. We actually, I think it was about three o'clock today. One of the boys' messages was like, "So, what are we actually doing this week?" Oh. We, <laughs> being being obviously the uh, the quote unquote B League trash team that came up is just going to get dumpstered every game. No one mm. wanted to scrim us, and they've all booked out. Oh, really? So we um, yeah, we we actually haven't had a scrim. It was the first night we've um on game night was where we actually started talking to each other. Oh so, wow. But um, yeah, that series I was, I was a little upset that we didn't win it four zero. Um, three mm. one, obviously us losing the Muro attack would have been acceptable, and I'm I'm quite upset in my myself for losing both those Tundra games. Um, one on a call and one on a play. Mm. Um, I think I think both of them were very much winnable. Um, but as as for Scorpions, um, I. I'm actually looking forward to playing them. I'm actually upset that I'm not going to be here because oh, no. my, my best mate's getting married on Friday oh. night. So 
Well, that, that, that's acceptable. At least, at least it's not like Saxon a few years ago where he had his own wedding and had to skip out on the Matildas grand final. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm half tempted just to, to take a laptop and, and just <laughs> play, at the, play at the reception. But mm. yeah, I'll, I won't be there on Friday, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I, I looked at the, at the team lists after, mm. um, after the draft and it was Matildas and Scorpions that I think we could be. Um, mm-hmm. I think scorpions are very much, um, very much not taking advantage of being able to draft new players and keeping the same roster for three seasons. A very big mistake. Um, I personally don't rate two or three of those players as as competitive players compared to what they could have gotten out of a draft. Um, I won't name names, but that's mm-hmm. just my personal opinion. I'm I quite respect JT as a caller. I, I think I've, I've played enough games with him to understand how he likes to play. Um, so mm. I think if if I was there, I would, I would give give him a decent run for his money, at least on a calling standard. Um, but yeah, I think I think the boys will go, all right, we'll see how we go. We what? might uh, might actually have a practice game sometime next week. So, Oh, perish the thought. Well, you're doing all right after, without the practice game. So, you know, maybe, maybe. But yeah, I don't. Don't fix what's not broken. We just that's, won't practice all week. That's it. <laughs> but uh, but no, I'm I personally am very excited to see you guys up in the the Premier League and adding a little bit uh bit, bit of an unknown factor to to the games there. Um, and cannot wait to see you this this Friday at eight o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, up against the South Sydney Scorpions. Power. Thank you so much for joining me again, and good luck. No worries. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much, Power, again, for sitting on that interview. It was so great to have a chat with you again, and so great that you could get your first tiebreaker win in the ANZ PL. Super exciting. Cannot wait to see more World of Tanks action coming up this Friday, twitch.tv slash World of Tanks ANZ from 7 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. But of course, the Comets and Matildas game wasn't the only one that happened on last Friday night. We got a few other games to uh, to talk through. So let's let's have a look first at the uh, Action X versus Scorpions match. So um, I was quite interested in this first matchup because they Action X chose Siegfried Line, which is a new map to the map pool. Uh, Mines went out, which will be much to the Scorpions' chagrin. There, they really like playing um, Mines. But Siegfried Line was an opportunity for some new strats to see what come out. So the the play seemed to be for the one cap in both games on on attack and defense for Adelaide Action X. So um, and it was interesting to see because the Action X kind of set up for this two flag push to begin with, and you can you can see on the map there that they they are really clustered in that. Um, that back end, that no, the northeastern side of the map, and Scorpions, I think, kind of realised this, and so they pushed under the one cap to uh, to to get the the cap victory there. And really, Adelaide Action X didn't have a lot of chance to respond here. Um, they pushed Dongalord in the back chat out to the to the open field there to try and get some resets in, but as soon as he fired off one shot. Uh, the Scorpions knew where he was and it was up to the, the rest of the Action X to come through the middle of the the town and try and get something. But it was very hard to come out and uh, particularly around the sort of E6, E5, E6 spot there, there's a bit where you can come out of the town and uh, and get, get shots onto it. But if where the Scorpions are holed down in particular it was very hard for them to just sort of peek and get those shots in. So Scorpions ended up taking both wins on Siegfried line there um, and w- went on to to uh, the next map and ended up with a 3-1 win over the Adelaide Action X. We spoke a bit uh, in the interview with PP Power about the, the Comets games against the Matildas, but I felt like we'd, I'd just like to show off some of the, the Himmelsdorf match here because this was quite interesting, and we did speak about how um, PP Power and that mouse tank there just was angled, even though you, the, the Matildas could get shots onto him. They couldn't penetrate, so there was no point in shooting, and they, he just had this this really good angle there. Um, eventually, the Matildas, who were on attack, pushed onto the the two flag there, started the cap, um, 
the Comets already knew that's where Matildas were heading, so they're, they're starting to rotate, or even before the Matildas have put these tanks on the cap. Uh, a brawl ensued, because, like, you're going into a defensive game on, on Himmelsdorf. You're going to get a lot of high HP tanks. And uh, you can see with, with like the E100s, two E100s, which is over 3,000 HP. The mouse itself had over 3,000 HP. Um, and even the Super Conk, you know, with, with high 2,000s HP as well. So they were they were looking to just sort of brawl this out. Um, they did take some shots, but eventually they rolled on... Um, did come down fairly closely in the end, as you would have heard in our discussion. Um, it there was technically it was a two v two, but Whippet in in his AMX fifty B was on the reload, um, so it ended up being Saxon from the Matildas taking on two of the the Comets, which eventually that uh, that went the way that you think it'd go, Comets way. Um, but one of them was pretty low on health, so Whippet was able to get rid of him, and then it kind of came down to reasonably equal HP in the final fight between um, Whippet and I forget who it was at the end. But in the end, the um, the Comets came away with a tiebreaker win in their first match back in the ANZ PL since Season 1. So that was really great to see and wish them good luck in the season ahead. And the last match of the night came down between the reigning champions, the North Sydney Sentinels and the Perth Panthers. So this one... Uh, I was kind of hoping for a bit more from the Panthers, if I'm being honest. Um, they they brought in Madhouse, former Bulldogs player, um, but really the, the Sentinels brought their their A team here. Uh, it's it's a it can be a little bit funny with the Sentinels early on in the season, like if if they bring in their full roster of of players, um, but they did with this between Rowendi, Waimo, Rainbow, Returned, and Dell. The, the Scorpions just like, you can, you can see if you're watching watching the video of this, JS has taken the hill on Cliff, um, but he's bled a fair bit. He's on his own. The rest of the uh, the, the Panthers are down around the, the donut um, and JS dies and it just gives over total control of the hill to the, the Sentinels there. Um, and with Goober having already bled a fair amount of damage, all the, all the Sentinels had to do was wait. Um, the... The Panthers were pretty much trapped on the other side of the donut. They did go up and try and get some one flag pressure happening, but Sentinels knew what they were doing. They knew that it was up to um, the Panthers to make a move, so they just held there. I think the only moves they did was they sent one tank right up to sort of A5 to hold off there and another tank all the way down to around about like J6, J5, J6. Um, and just to give them that extra little bit of vision so that they could see any rotations around the the far side of the hill onto the two cap. Um, and the, the CS-63 going up to the far north will, would keep an eye out for anything that, that came out um, onto the one cap there. So um, very convincing play. The Sentinels did end up winning 3-1 in, in there. So Panthers did manage to take a game back on Ghost Town. Um, but yeah, it was a, quite a dominant display on Cliff, and yeah, Cliff was was the map pick for the Sentinels, but it yeah, it, they just showed their dominance right there. So that was uh, that was a very very interesting display, uh, very very convincing display from the Sentinels, and they're definitely going to be the team to beat this season. So that was the ANZ PL for. Um, for round one, very exciting. I, I can't believe that we've gotten back into it already. It, it seems like not that long ago that, that we were watching the, the grand final at Fortress Melbourne there. And um, the grand final for season five will still be at Fortress Melbourne in, in November and cannot wait to see see that and get through the whole season. Hopefully my beloved Perth Panthers can uh, can get a few wins in there. Um, some of you may have noticed as well that the Matildas are back in the lineup. That would be uh, because they picked up a lot of um, ex-Matildas players. There was the first player trade between the Adelaide Action X and the what used to be the Christchurch Conquerors. Um, and because of the amount of Melbourne players in there and lack of Christchurch players, the um, they renamed to the Melbourne Matildas again. So um a little bit sad to not see any New Zealand representatives in the uh, Premier League at the moment, but 
uh, very excited to see the Matildas back. Season three champions. In fact, most of this lineup that are currently in the Melbourne Matildas were in that team. So it's going to be very exciting to see how that goes. So I want to talk a little bit about LCO now. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot to talk about because there were no games last week, but that is because all the excitement will be happening this weekend at DreamHack. So Friday night, 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, we've got Order taking on Pentanet to find out who will go through to verse Chiefs on the Sunday in that grand final and to grab that spot at Worlds. Very exciting. Cannot wait to see it. I'm, I'm uh, repping pentanet.gg at the moment with my shirt. Very much uh, cannot wait to see that. Um, but yeah, all these games at DreamHack, if you're in Melbourne, definitely get along and see it. Uh, I cannot wait. Um, I wish I was there. I know there's a, um, a one of the, the people from the game on Oz Discord, Mercury, is over there at the moment. He'll be having the time of his life. Like, you just, like, between that, between the LCO stuff, there's um, a CSGO Challengers League, there's Halo, um, they're having their their regional playoffs there as well. It's just going to be massive. Get down there if you're in Melbourne. Um, I believe it's all happening around the Rod Laver Arena and Margaret Court Arena. So it's just going to be massive. Definitely get there. Um, one of the interesting things I noticed was uh, was that, unfortunately, MacMate's not going to be part of the broadcast. But that's okay, because if you're a World of Tanks fan, he's actually on the World of Tanks broadcast now. So he's uh, he stepped in for Ben Lodge, San, aka Sandman, for uh, for some hosting duties there with Elfish Guy and Cthulhu. So that's, that's where you can get your MacMate fix. But in terms of the LCO, we've got Skimmy and Rusty and Kitty returning from the, the desk from the regular season, but they'll also be joined by Maximize and Amelg as analysts. Um, I'm going to butcher this. I don't know why. It looks like a fairly simple name, but I keep on getting of overly overly. Um, sorry for that pronunciation. As the desk host and Xenox as the stage host. So that's going to be amazing. Get down there Friday night and Sunday night for DreamHack. So. Um, I'm going to keep this short because I've, I've taken, you know, about 10 minutes to actually get to it. But you may have noticed that Natty's not here tonight. Unfortunately, Natty couldn't make it. So um, I just wanted to jump in, give you some information about upcoming esports news. And um, really, the, the big news to come out of, of this is that the Sentinels have signed popular streamer Tarek. He's an ex-CSGO player um, and he's come along. He's been streaming as a Valorant streamer, been racking up heaps and heaps of views on that um and he's joined as a content creator for the sentinel team which is another huge signing considering that shroud joined their roster not that long ago as well as an actual player um they didn't didn't make it through to um to the the finals that they were in there the north american last chance qualifier but still like this this is huge a huge signing for for valorant and uh, cannot wait to see where the Sentinels go with that one there. Um, but that's it. Just a quick little wrap up um, for for nuts and bolts this week. Cannot wait to see the results that come out of DreamHack. Got World of Tanks action coming up. So much esports going on. Stay tuned. And as always, we'll see you next week.